have been thrown. If you see the heap over there, there is not a slope from which it has fallen down. It has been thrown up. It's much further this way than is possible to fall by a single rock. So it has got help to move this out. The rock has been shaken this way. It, it, it continues to jump. This is the way it's doing. And that's why we have those blocks. So it's interesting. To see it in a big structure in a small. You can see there exactly how those blocks have been moving with respect to each other because these horizontal lines are, do, are faulted there. They are opening, here it's opening so that the fragment in between has fallen down. So it's an opening. That's in what kind of process opens a rock? I mean, that's not glacial tectonics and anything like that, yeah, but it's seismic. SKB and Posibai only looking at instrument and historical data. From this blood box, they predict for 100,000 years, and they get one magnitude 6, 0.1 magnitude 7, that is only one seven in one million years. I, as a geologist, have to look in the yellow books, paleoseismic, old seismic of the yeah, ice. And there we get so many events. I have recorded 59 huge earthquakes, age, magnitude, everything. So if I use that material and try to convert it for 100,000 years, instead of getting this, I get about 1,000, 100, 10, magnitude 8, wow! And maybe a couple of magnitude 9, which is the highest value we have. already learned something here in this cave because we said that it was probably reasonably short after ice had vanished past the area so it's after ice age for sure this was formed by an earthquake we are sure about that then this passage passage is opened Very, very sharp, it's broken. And from the other side, we know exactly. 
exactly this is a yamka. You have another sharp angle here, another sharp angle. So this block was sitting together with this one, but was the big pointy rock was once sitting there. The surface here is the same surface which is polished by the ice. So the rock surface had been broken, fractured, and the pieces have been uh, pushed upwards against gravity. And that can be nothing else than the seismic event, making them jump out of place. We went here, got a very nice location where we found, for the first time in Finland described, liquefaction. Last autumn. Liquefaction is when sand, when silt is finely graded, it could be even be gravel, is shaken. Then it starts to flow. It becomes fluidite, like a liquid. It is going up, bending through the other sediments. Liquefied sand behaves like a heavy liquid, so the, even a block can swim in it. That's quite remarkable. Okay, so we have learned about liquefaction now. Then we come to the sediments. We are in the gravel pit in Leitila. We have, just before this locality, explored bedrock deformations, which are certainly from violent earthquakes. So we checked what can be the, um, the traces in the gravel pit. We see very strongly deformed gravel with a lot of faulting, micro faulting, it's setting the sediments. Over on the other side you see liquefact material which is trying to escape pushing up the valves so it becomes completely deformed. At the side, they succeeded to go through and vented through the varved clay. We will try to count the varves and see how many varves after the deglaciation this event took place. We haven't done that yet. Between that point and that point, it is 65 varves. Between that point and that point, it is 65 years. We go to another side. This is another one. And could you believe it, between the first varve and the top, we have 67 varves. We had 65 in the other, but then I didn't count that as that. So, 67 years after the deglaciation, we had this earthquake, and it deformed it very, very, very strongly. Here is the Okiloto Peninsula, where the repository is supposed to be. It's surrounded by lots of fractures, big fractures. Along the fractures, you can see that bedrock has been faulted, sediment have been disturbed, so it's after the ice age. And, very interesting, a lot of gas, better gas. One liter of ice will go to 168 liter of gas. <laughs> metal ice uh, explosive venting. So when metal, metal ice goes explosively over into gas, metal venting can, can and in one case has made something like that, but even 35 meter high. Yes, this has happened. And the last one was 2,000 years ago in Hüdüksvall, just on the other side. And it caused a tsunami wave of 20 meters. It's remarkable. So that was the seismic thing. Now we go to the respect distance. Okay, we have a fall in Sweden, this stock on here. Goes into the Finnish Bay and from the Finnish Bay into Russia. So SKB and Fossiva, they say, they say that if there is a fall like this, they can put the waste 50 to 100 meters away. Meters. They say that one kilometer from an earthquake, a fall like this. Rock can never be deplaced more than five centimeters. Five centimeters. Nothing. Now we go. This is, here is a fault. One kilometer to the north. The displacement is six to eight meters, not centimeters. Meters. And that's the difference between us. You 
start to see, my dear friends, the difference between models and observation. And for me, observation wins. Observation wins.